are live. Ooh, let me go to the overlay. We're live. We are live. Hold on. Why the hell do I have this stream? How do we go to the overlay? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We are live. A quick live edition of the Armchair NBA, a little for Horseman edition. Um, the actually, you know what? Venture Media is here. That's uh, JSV Capital's alter ego. Actually, I have to admit, we're not lifting the embargo. It was clickbait, and I just wanted to kind of f with you guys a little bit. We're so now we're not lifting it. Well, J Jason, what Jason thought I was thinking of not lifting it, and he lost his shit. So we're not lifting it. But Jason, why did you lose your shit? So, so I think we should stick by what we discussed, and and we should stick by our word. So I, I'm. I, Highly against this move right here. Can you mute me for one second, Tom? Absolutely, Jeff. I gotta shut my door. No Go on. No, so we're not we're not we're not lifting it. Um, I wanted to have a little fun. Just some shout outs. Teresa, how you doing? Earl Rogers, welcome back. Philip Thorpe, uh, Taylor, Father Time, good man. I think Fat Ball saying I'm not sure if that's a real him. Uh Co Train, um, Philip Thorpe again, Serafino, Ciao, Fratello. Detroit Siggy, welcome back. Um, Tom Lochner, how you doing? Anthony Ramundi, and a whole bunch of other people coming in. We have about 32 people and counting. Vinny, how you doing today, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Good. You seem solemn. No, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, Jason, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. Still, it's What is it? 840 Eastern. Rocking and rolling since 6 a.m. this morning. Haven't stopped. Let's keep let's keep rolling. All right, love it. So I, I want to first I want to kind of weigh in, and and Jason is I think the smart one, and has been kind of out of the loop in terms of like what's oh, been going okay. on. Got got to direct and, that. <laughs> well, 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 it's interesting because the Mohawk has been around, but Jason has not been. So what's your take as like a super civilian on these last few weeks, these last few days? Be honest, like in terms of like the embargo. Some of the stuff that's been said, I know you don't hold back. Where do you kind of land being kind of, I don't want to say an outsider, you know what I mean, like a true civilian? Yeah, um, I, I I keep using the word old school. Like I, I think my grandfather, like he wouldn't, he wouldn't even have, he wouldn't get involved in any of that. Like if it was a serious situation, yeah, you get involved, but you get involved in other ways. And I'm a civilian, and I don't get involved in that. And and anybody who brings somebody down verbally physically talking about other people it's not my scene everybody always says they always say i'm not about that but they do it so therefore they are about that because if you feed into it you're about it right yep. the way to yep. not be about it is to steer clear stay away and i don't care that my neighbor is mfing me or saying whatever he wants to say about me god bless have a nice day Peace be with you and also with you. Happiness, joy. Um, that's all you should want in your life. All right, a little too kumbaya for me, but why do you think <laughs> why do you think Doris Day? God why do you God. think and, and this is kind of open? Why do you think um and Detroit City is right that you do get judged by the company you keep? But why do you think that um creators go down this rabbit hole? I want to stick with Jason for a second, then I'll go to Munchie over there. Help. Like, like the media, right? Controversy brings views. In our world, it brings subscribers, right? Let me go check out this channel because guess who's on it and guess who's fighting and guess who has, you know. And and unfortunately, in this world, people get are getting used. Like, oh, this guy has the X amount of subscribers. We're going to – we'll have him on the show, and if it goes great, he'll be our friend. But, hey, if it doesn't go great, We'll create some controversy so his subscribers keep tuning in to see what we're doing or saying about him. So it's a loser situation when you get involved with people like this because they'll use you until they don't need you anymore as far as in a good way, and they'll just get rid of you. Or in a bad way, they'll use you until you know it's old, right? And they'll just trash you and trash you until it gets old. But they'll use you either way. What do you think, Joe? I think, first of all, you're very rude. Tom, because you didn't introduce me to this guy over here. You're not going oh, to introduce me to your friend? This is Jason. <laughs> uh, this is Mohawk's alter ego. Okay. 
Hi, I'm Joe. Nice to meet you. Joe, okay. nice to meet you. Yes. Jason, JSV Capital. All your business lending needs, Joe. <laughs> yeah, and me, I'm Joey Snacks, Joey Bag of Donuts, Joey Hats, <laughs> Joey B the Barking Dog, Joey the uh, the Eater. What else? Oh, the Landscaper, the Leaf Blower. Got some names, man. <laughs> Oh, my yeah, so, but we're just kind of decompressing about the week. What, what, but again, we'll move on. But and I know we're Vinny's lands. But why? Why do you think, Joe? Why do you think creators kind of go down that that road? Make a wish. Uh, make a wish foundation. That was go old. down the road of talking shit and stuff yeah, like of, that. Yeah, kind of. I negative. think it probably. Well, I think. Um, you have to look no further than the wallet. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's yeah, but war I, I, brings money. I don't feel um, it's a sustainable strategy, though. I just don't. Like, the marketer in me kind of is like, you know what? You may get some wins. You may get some subs. But, like, did you get the right subs? Um, I'm going to – I'm going to – I'm going to say something. You guys are going to think I'm a fucking nuts or you guys may say this makes sense. Mm -hmm. When we get to 10,000, this channel, we, we, we're, we're going to talk about our strategy in a minute and our shows in a minute, but I'm actually looking to hopefully build some type of community, right? 10,000 strong. Maybe somebody right. needs a, a fundraiser. Maybe somebody needs help. Maybe somebody needs business advice. Somebody may need capital, JSV capital, shameless plug, whatever that is, right? About build like a true <laughs> online community. Am I crazy thinking we can do that or like, or you actually think it could be possible? Uh, I go first. Yeah. I, I think if it, it, I think everything has to go right for it to work, but I think the, everything is us doing it. I don't think anybody could stop us if we do it correctly. And the idea is like you say, if we stay in the lane, Right, and we do everything that we're supposed to do. I don't think there's any stopping us. I don't. Yeah. Now, 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 one of the things that kind of came up this week a lot behind the scenes and top of the scenes is kind of the definition of like a friend, right? And I don't know. I'm just again, maybe I'm old school, but like, yeah, you know, I consider Jason a friend. He's over today. He's mm -hmm. over all the time. You guys come over. We break bread at the house. And I'm not saying people that don't come over on friends or yeah. somebody who lives in Atlanta that you met, maybe even online, isn't a friend. But I always think there's kind of levels to the game, right? Like as like adults, right? As grown ass men, how do you character character characterize your friendships? Maybe new friends versus acquaintances, and then old friends for a long time. And then like how do you how do you navigate like your social scene versus when you were younger? Joe, what, what like like I'll give you an example. You're having a, a party at your house. I'll, I'll 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 do I'll do Vinny next. Vinny, you're having your 50th birthday. Um, um, oh no, uh, the, uh, the Detroit City. I'll be. I have a lot of interviews lined up. Uh, some which you're allowed. This was just meant just to pop on. We're gonna be here for a little bit and we'll get back to the interview. And this just won't be like an interstitial we wanted to do real quick. Uh, so Vinny, in terms of friendship, right? Your 50th birthday is tomorrow. Do you invite the childhood friend you didn't talk to in 10 years? Do you invite the people that you talk to now? Do you invite the people online? What's your definition of a good friend right now? A good friend to me is I have a couple that if I didn't see them for five years, when we see them, hey, idiot, what's up? We hug and it was like we saw each other yesterday. There are certain people you connect with. Now, you know, if you haven't spoken to someone for 10 years, obviously you're out of touch. The memories yeah. are wonderful. You wouldn't give up the memories for anything in the world, but they are not currently active in your life. Yeah. And I think the people that are currently active take precedence. Listen, I've met so many people. What am I going to have 700 people at my party? You know, it's the people, I think people come in and out of your life for a reason. And that does not make any of them less valuable or less um part of who you are today but the people that you're dealing with now or within reason that you've spoken to are people and people that you've lost, lost contact with i don't think they'd expect to be invited anyway if you can, can, I, can, I, can i can i i'll get a question to the floor when i when i was when i was going through a divorce a few years ago 
Um, and I don't, hopefully you guys haven't went through this, but your social circle dries up pretty quick and people kind of take sides. You don't get invited to that one party because you're not sure if you have the kids that weekend or you don't get invited because he's going through something or they may have went with the other side and went with your spouse over you. And the definition of friends always changes when you go through like a really rough time. Um, have you guys any experience with that either way where you were going through a tough time and people kind of walked out on you or you maybe had to walk away from a tough situation because they were going through something? I don't know. Who wants to take the floor? I, I've been through that, yeah. And it is only because they either don't know what to say or afraid of saying the wrong thing or they just give you time. Like a friendship if you fight with someone, right? Yeah. So you're going to show up every day. Oh, are you okay? No. But when you're okay organically, like you say, it happens. You know when you're both ready. And yeah. before then, only damage can occur. I think it, it could be worse. But your you're significant running. other has a big play in that role. And that's the sad thing. And husband or wife. You know, it, it, you know, if the husband's a jealous type or the husband's a me, me, I want attention, or if the wife is like that, like your best friend gets divorced and your wife goes, oh, you're going out with him? Like, because now it's a frat, now it's a frat party, now it's a bachelor party. No, I'm going out with my friend. Yeah, he's divorced, but he's still my friend. You know, I'm just going out for a drink. Oh, the wife don't want that anymore. Now the husband pulls back or vice versa. That if, happened, just so you know, goes, that just so you know, that happened in spades with me. And I was reading like an article, like some women like almost think it's like contagious, like like it rubs off on her husband and he's gonna go leave or something, you know? Or it's yeah. a friend that's single now, and that's that friend right. you're having a drink watching the football game is mm -hmm. kind of trying to meet someone right. and you're the wingman again. The friend didn't choose to get married and have kids. So now you gotta shut the friend out of your life because he didn't choose to have kids, right? But it goes the other way too. Men do it to their 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 wives. Some men do it to their wives. Oh, you're going to go out with her and have a girl's night? Like, your spouse has a lot to do with it. You know, man, woman, it's it's tough. I agree. I agree. Have That's you like ever, have you, have you guys ever? Best, not, man. Yeah. I love it. When my wife says she's going out with her friends. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Joe, is, Joe, is that? I'm working hey, out the dollars. Hey, I'll pay for her. I'll hey, pay for well, her. How much do you need? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Joe, is that an ascot? Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. It's uh was he Richie April over here? We have to I think <laughs> he he is now ordained. No, Ralphie. Ralphie. No, 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 but hold on. He's now ordained Joey Ascot. Yeah, but Joey here's Ascot. the thing, right? So oh there's guys on this YouTube, you know, that are um very influential and people that I really, you know, listen to and like when they say stuff. I take it to heart, you know what I mean? So so Tom comes up with this thing where, you know, he's telling me like, oh, yeah, keep wearing jerseys. Keep wearing jerseys. I like it. And he's making fun of me the whole time, Tom I, is. I love it. So now someone tells me like, bro, you think he likes your jerseys? He's just he's just ribbing on you. That's not I true. said, what? That is I said, true. okay, I got to change true. up my style now. No more yep. jerseys. I, uh... He's the I, Joy Behar of, of our crew. He's the I, uh, I if have to, the view, I, he'd be Joy Behar. I need I need to make a confession. I low key like ascots. Oh, I, they're I, the best. I, if, I, if I could fucking pull one off, I would wear an ascot Ooh. on my ascot. I can't, right. I'm not an ascot guy, but I kind of low key wish I was. You know. Yeah, you need an ascot when you go out. You need one that covers your face with two little eye holes, and you're good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, so hold on. So I want to get to this. This is kind of near and dear to me. Have you guys ever like disinvited? Like, have you been close close with a friend and disinvited them because their personal decisions, whether it be divorce, maybe they're partying too much, no, would it, whatever that was, and then your wife was just like, "Listen, like, so no. Mohawk's got to go." Has that ever happened to you guys? Yeah, it happened Sunday I've when Vinny when Vinny came over my house. <laughs> my wife is like. Get him the hell out of here. So like, hold give on. me a couple of minutes. Let me feed him and get him on his way. <laughs> Jason, what, what, what's that about? I've never done it. I've, I have single friends, and I have friends that have um, been separated. And, uh, you know, I've been with my wife for a long time. But uh, it's it's clear. And she has the same thing. I won't stop her. It's a true friend. It's, you know, you're, you're going out for a drink, going out to eat. They're coming over. 
hey, this is life. People have different life paths. We're not going to choose our friends by which way we went, which way they went. Now, don't get me wrong. We're going on a vacation. Of course, we have little kids. Is it better for us to go partner with a, a, a friend who has little kids as well? Yeah, it, you know, it just goes together. Yes, I get that. But to seclude a friend because they have different life choices, I obviously, you know what I mean. Um, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Have I, you, I, have you, I won't have, stand you, have you had any adult? I know Jason's like contemplating, but have you guys had any adult friends that just came out, like married, kids, a whole bit, and just like you know what, um, whatever, guy or girl? Yeah. Or like had a different life direction. Have you guys had that? Yeah, my my godfather. What? Yeah, my godfather, forty something years old. No, fifty something years. He passed away. God rest his soul. Yeah. Um, and he was great to me. He was great to me. My my father passed away when I was. I told you guys when I was three months old. I didn't have a father again. My stepfather until I was four years old. My godfather did the whole family thing. Okay, which is my uncle by marriage. So my mother's sister, her husband. I don't know, maybe again, 50 years old. Yeah, that's it. See, he was like, ah, this is the way I'm this is the way I'm going. And that was it. Wow. Yeah. What what about what about world all from Italian families? Have you had anybody even younger, anybody come out in your guys' families? Yeah. Um, yeah. um my niece. How, how was it received? I, um more shock than it you know now it's a little different now different yeah. generation now but more shock but are you really shocked i'm not saying if you're married and you come out you could tell even yeah. before it's official you can tell yeah. so how shocked are you if you've kind of known all along and then it's like hey you know my uh my niece uh came out not only did she come out she's very a uh, very active in the LGBT community. So she's uh like they actually have like a rainbow Christmas tree. So like she's super active. And it's interesting because um although my mother, I think I I, I don't know how your parents were or but my, my mother as she got older actually got a little bit more open minded. She was actually the opposite. Some people get like older and crotchety. She just some reason became more open minded. So I knew she would like love my niece. I know she wouldn't care. Uh, but I would have been interested interested to see how she would have reacted in terms of like, you know, the little old school kicks and all, maybe we can't have children, this and that, the old school beliefs come in. But I think a lot of the old timers, like my mother, I think they tend to be more open minded than they have been in the past. You know what I mean? What do, what do you guys think in terms of Italian Americans, of course? Oh, the bad. Oh, like, really? I couldn't imagine. Well, no, I'm saying what I mean is maybe this is not answer you're looking for but because i'm thinking right what is the suicide rate amongst gay people or you know well, LB, I, well, you know is it much higher than i i heard the suicide attempt rate amongst transgenders in like the neighborhood of like 40 attempt rate, i don't know if about 40 percent it's high it's high so that right there is something that you know bothers me because i don't think I don't think it's a choice. You know, everybody says, oh, you, you know, you, you don't have to be gay or whatever, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, the the stigma with being gay of like 50 years ago, you know what I mean? These people were getting their asses kicked. Their families threw them out. You know, I think about it. You know, your parents create you and then, you know, they hate you because you're gay. I mean... So that's something that's really like near and dear to me because um, I just feel real bad for people that have to go through that. It's not right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, and it's a part of a mm -hmm. society that's evil, but now it's changing a little bit, you yeah. know, but um, yeah, that bothers me a lot, man. Cause I wish I could help these people. Cause I had gay friends before I have gay relatives. They're just oh. like regular people. Well, you were an ass guy. <laughs> Just like regular yeah, people. Yeah. Thurston Howell the fourth. <laughs> no, yeah. They're like regular people. Yeah. Oh, they are. I, what I mean I by that is it's funny the way you like sports. Way you say it, I'm right. Like, no, I know, but like they like sports and you know, they're just regular people. 
He's like they have they have two feet, <laughs> two they, have ten, they, have ten, they have ten fingers. <laughs> they breathe, you know, to live he's stuff like, like that. He, he like he like pokes them with a the stick. Right. <laughs> wow, they're real. They need food to live. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know. I, I, I get, I get really. As you guys can tell, and I was like all over Vinny when I interviewed him for like eight hours at one time. I, I get really fascinated about certain stuff within the Italian American community: mental illness, you know, sexuality, um, interracial dating, like a whole bunch of other stuff. Like, there's a lot of things that, like, obviously were historical no nos. What do you think, Tom? What do you think is is bigger in the old school Italian people? What would be a bigger heartbreak or an oh my god moment if there was an interracial couple or somebody was gay uh, somebody was gay what, what would be a bigger issue for the old school italian well I, I'll, I'll tell you this much i had a cousin who at the time only would be uh you know women of color and it, they sent him to italy because they thought he'd get over it <laughs> <laughs> what sense is that? I mean, I don't know. I, don't know. I just they just they like really they just sent, they thought they thought they thought, like I know I know a few people that um one girl I know she like kind of ran away at seventeen started dating somebody she came back they sent her to Italy the whole like cure is to send them to Italy I don't know <laughs> I don't know I don't know if that works you know what I think a lot of it was too I don't know I think in every family and, and tell me guys if you think this is correct. I think older generations wanted grandchildren. And I think they felt the name is not going to continue. My name continues with my son. My father never had siblings, no guys. So if my son doesn't have a boy, the name ends. I think that was very big back in the day. And yeah. I think a lot of that had to do with never have grandchildren. And I think that was some of the thinking there. But what about adopting? Ooh, my my yeah, mother. Not everyone could do that. My mother, like so, like my, like I, I would like I speak highly of my mother always. But one of the areas that she wasn't as flexible was adoption. She goes, I don't know if I could raise a kid that wasn't my own. Like you know how like in Bronx Tale, like there was Lorenzo and he was kind of good, but then he was like the interracial part was weird, and Sonny was a bad dude, but he was you know everybody has I call it the blind spot. There's something in their character. That is just not optimal, and it's a blind spot. It's a or, or character flaw. That's the one thing. My mom, she she just she was like, yeah. you know, I, I don't think I could raise a kid. You know what mom. changed me with with adoption is two things. One, my close friends, like my close friends to this day that I know, black, white, or whatever. If they needed something, I would take care of them. You know what I mean. And yeah. I still love them. You know, I, I don't know if there's degrees of loving someone, but also I have a couple of dogs that, you know what I mean? They're not my blood, but we love them just as much. I mean, it's amazing. Like if you see my wife with our dogs, it's like I'm on the couch. It's like, I'm serious, man. Like every week taking the dog to the vet, he sneezes. Oh, he's sick. Let's go get him some medication. It's like crazy like that. So that, Open my eyes and I said to myself, I said, you know, if you could help a child that doesn't really have a good uh, stable, you know, household or whatever, and there's ton of tons of them mm -hmm. that you could, you know, that you could help this person and, and also help yourself. And then you got to look at one other thing is I know people who have adopted they don't love these kids one iota less than someone they mm -hmm. had. And that's yep. just from, and I know people that, you know, have adopted children and regular, you know, and real children and their brothers and mm -hmm. sisters and the whole thing. So what, what was about, it? What about, um, what about if like somebody's gay, is it easier if they're female versus being a male? Like if somebody wrote like, Oh, if they're female, who gives a shit? But if they're, they're men, mm -hmm. is that worse? <laughs> <laughs> in the in the in the, in the heterosexual category, if there are two uh, very attractive women, uh, that is a a pass, right? It, it is. It's true, right? It's like, oh, die, have fun, yeah. If you see two girls who are 
you know, of, of the more butchier type, it's like, uh, you know, there's like a stigma with that. If you're hot, blonde, blue eyed, and, oh man, hot, let's go. And then, it, you know, it's just, I don't know. It, there, there is a difference. It's I'm okay. It should be. I'm saying in the, in the social environment, guys are like ruining off for the hot girls to get it on. Right. And, yeah. and the as, girls are, as men, oh, we love that, but we probably wouldn't love it if if it was our daughter. You know what I mean? Correct. Like, correct. You know, so it probably would affect me the same way, but it doesn't affect me negatively. My cousin, he was a gay basher, straight up. Like, really? serious. Oh, my God. Like, the type that might attack one if he saw one. You know what I mean? He has two-way kids, and they're both running the wrong way. Both of them. What are the odds of that? Jesus. Two kids wow. running, and it's amazing to me. It really is. Well, it really is something. amazing that that could happen. A dear friend of mine, her cousin, was one of the um, Dog Day Afternoon, the real Westenberg. And uh, he is the brother of the guy who was at the desk. And he said, I can't do this, and ran out. He didn't actually take part, but he ran out. And four of the brothers are gay. What? So what are the odds? Four? That four of the brothers out of seven kids are gay. Wow. So mm -hmm. where, do you, where does is an environment? That's why you have to wonder. You know, when people say it, it's inherent in you know, how are four brothers gay? Out of I wonder if it's in the kids? DNA. I would think, well, that. But to, my thing is just look at yourself in the mirror. When you. <laughs> That's up, what I don't want to do. No, uh, when you go to bed. As heterosexuals, we, what do we think of? We think of women, right? But that's that's planted in our brains. Don't you think it goes the other way too? I, Don't you think that a, a gay man or woman, it's in their chemical makeup. It's in their brain. They are actually thinking of the same sex. Just like we are thinking of the opposite sex. We think it's different for them. Right. Well, yeah, I think of Vinny when I go to sleep, but, you know, once I get past that. that I mean, I, right, I do think of Tom when I go to sleep. And exactly. When that's another story. That's, that's scary. I think of Tom's bank book when I go to sleep. <laughs> which, is, which, is, which is late these days. I got yeah. well, to finish off strong this year. Jason uh, yes. is doubling, doubling his retainer next month. Yes. Nice. <laughs> I wonder why, though, as men, like, it's just natural that we like women. Like, I don't know. Is like. Procreation. Is, is it Procreation. is it like Procreation. Pre, it's in our head, you know what I mean? Like I don't know. Cause like you look at two dogs, my two dogs, they're always trying to hump one another. They're probably not gay, they just don't know the difference. Procreation? Procreation? No, we answered it. They're your two dogs. I uh I was at a I was at a, I was at a, a pharmaceutical not a ph yeah, pharmaceutical conference. No, sorry, dermatology conference. It was in New York. And I was with one of the, it was the weirdest thing ever. I was with one like the top, top, top dermatologist in New Jersey, right? I was like, like a very large practice, right? This guy was basically like very flamboyant, comes off as being very gay, to be candid, right? And, um, but he was married. And what was weird was not only was he married, he had a controlling wife. Like he would have to go to lunch. <laughs> Where are you? Text every two minutes. When you coming back, like she controlled him, but he was like straightforward gay, right? So I was at like a regional manager of the company, and my rep, you know, worked with him, and he, we wanted to get more business from him. So we said, "Hey, let's go get a coffee across the street. Let's talk." You know, that's what conferences would be used for. So we're chatting, and he goes, "You know what?" And like sitting there, and like you know, when you're in sales, you're you're you know you're amiable, you know. And he's like, you know what? He goes, a mouth is a mouth, right? You know, you know, a mouth is a mouth, right? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, you know, a mouth is a mouth, right? And I'm like, mm. I like, fro I didn't know what to say. I'm like, I'm like, and I'm, you know, like, you know, like in sales, you can be agreeable to anything. You're like, hey, let's right. chop up your foot. Sure, <laughs> oh, yeah. but yeah. Mouth, you know. And I just sat there, <laughs> and he's like, no, but like, mouth is a mouth, right? And I'm like, that's a big doctor, a big customer. And the only thing that came out of my mouth was I'm like, no, not really, because if I felt the whisker, I'd flip out. Like, so oh, I just, I don't know what to yeah. Say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. You know, 
You know, guys know who Gus Faraci is, right? Of course. Yeah. Okay. So his family was from like around the corner from yeah. my yeah. family. Yeah. And do you realize what happened to him and why he went to jail? Steroids? No, they beat up. Some, he killed some gay kid. Oh, wow. Didn't know I that. didn't know that. They and a little in the city, some guy hit on him or whatever. And they basically took the kid, I think, to Wolf's Pond Park and killed him. And he did like nine years in jail for that. He had just gotten out of prison not too long um, before he killed the agent. It definitely was under a year. We were young when he killed the agent, right? Like when he 1989, killed he killed him. Oh, so you were like teens. Yep. Where were you when it happened? That wasn't far from you, I don't think. When it happened, I was in Brooklyn. But it, I remember, it wasn't that not far from where you lived? What, where they killed the kid? Yeah, yeah. Not really. It's the South Shore. Oh, uh, okay. But what's interesting is you kind of, I hate to say this, but to play Italian geography, if you will. So it, you remember who was in the car with him, right? When he got shot? Oh. Dominic some shit, his cousin? Scalfani. Joseph oh, yeah, yeah, Scalfani. when he got, yeah, 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 when he got yeah. killed, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, yep. then, and then, yep. and then who was Joseph fiancé to? Yep, Ramona, yep, I know Ramona, that. Ramona Rizzo. I hated him for a long time for that. Who was, who was guest number eight on the show. We got to have her back. Um, the only thing is she goes, she'll come back. She just says, she's she, just, just. Joking interviewer, but I, otherwise she'll come back. She actually wants to get interviewed by the Mohawk. Yeah. Do you think like, uh, you know, like if I, you know, like sent her an email saying hi or how are you or I love your show and stuff like that, you uh, think she'd write back or? If your wife's watching this now. Um, no, no, no. Not to hit on her. I'm saying just like I'm a fan. Yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a personal friend. Absolutely. Right. Like Angel Gotti, right? I would love to email her and tell her, you know, like, uh, I respect your old, or I respected your old man when he was alive, you know, because I know a lot of people go at him and talk shit, but I'll, uh, they don't know the real deal behind that. Well, I'll get that in a second. Did, did, did Gus uh, Faraci rape the kids before he killed them? I don't know if he did that. Got it. Well, All I, I know is he... Uh, um okay so i'm reading the comments and sometimes i'm not sure if it's like a fucking imposter in the chat but i guess he was in the city some kid hit on him and like you know they killed him so i don't know too much about the details of actually what happened but i know he went to jail for that yeah, it was well, 1980 I'll, it happened, I think. I'll, I'll tell you this. Ramona um, is a close personal friend. If you ever wanted to reach out and send some messages over email, I'm sure that can be easily done. Angel, I can see she, she's doesn't super like me, but I do have her email. I can see if I can give out your email. But right. She, but she emails yeah, I, me. Actually, I no, you could give my email to everyone, but not her. Of course you give her my email. No, no, no. I don't know. I, I don't know if she'll email me. She, I don't think she... Particularly likes me. I reached out to Ramona and I didn't get anything back either a couple of weeks ago. What the? Um, She's going to respond to you? The Brooklyn Juke Vinny Bracco? What are you, crazy? <laughs> oh, it's funny because I actually got a text. Um, Who is this I, I have a holiday. <laughs> I have a holiday party to go to on the 15th and she'll probably be there. And what about Jeff Nadu's fight? Are we going to that? I don't know. You guys will probably have to do that. I might have to sit that one out, but you guys should go. Jersey like Jeff uh, uh, do. I talked. I talked to him earlier today, and uh, he did a good. Uh, oh man, he just did another. He just dropped another episode on. Um, oh God, I'm drawing the blank. I was literally just talking to him on the way here, and he just dropped another episode. I got to check it out. I, I got to pay more attention to his podcast. I think um, he knows his stuff, and it's going to sound crazy, but I'm getting more into like guys like us commentators than than first party guys. Not to knock first party guys, but I like the analysis of things, you know, what they think about, um, you know, because if you give your own interpretation, you're going to, you're going to, you know, hopefully 
tell the truth, right? But it's going to be your truth, right? Versus when you do like an analysis, like broader scale, especially in history, I don't know. Somebody fascinated by that. He he did some cool episodes. I got to check it out. Um, I don't think he's in, I don't think he's in a chat tonight, but uh, we'll put a link for him. He seems like a good one. Joe, what were you eating, Joe? Hey, Joe Karate. I'm having gum. I'm chewing gum. Chew's chewing. He's chewing with his front teeth like he's got no back teeth. I, Joe, you're right. I'm chewing with my front teeth. How could you see that? Chewing the whole time. You're chewing with your front teeth. You got no molars. You got no. You got nothing back there. How about you fucking kiss my ass, okay? Yeah. How do you chew your front teeth? Look at him. He's looking at him chewing his. I'm not chewing him. Now he put it in the back. He had it in the front for a long time. Vinny, yeah. have you ever Vinny, have you ever seen that? What, live? Somebody no. chew with their front teeth. Live. No, I've, I've seen them play with the gum with their front teeth, then it goes in the back. Do you know how much fucking money I threw into my teeth in the last fucking year? It's a very sore subject with me, you, please. You know, you know what's interesting? You know how like there's guys who don't have front teeth? I don't think Joe's back teeth. Could be. Yeah, his <laughs> teeth go to here, I think. I think the rest... It opens up and he's like, a, like a <laughs> Luke had a funny one. Luke Joe, had a funny one. Luke, Joe, comment that again. That was funny. He goes, Luke goes, Luke goes, Luke Maka. He goes, Oh, Jesus. Luke's man, Luke's back here. Luke goes, Jeez, this, this, oh, there he goes. How much is Joe's wife starving him? Man, can't stop chomping. Oh, uh, let's Luke guess Maka? what he's eating. Gum. I love you guys, I not you it. guys, the people in the chat. How did I miss? Uh, They're Luke? very, very nice. And uh, so, so, oh, look at that. Ryan, see, Ryan's my homeboy. You get so, more flavor with your front teeth. So, so, Luke, yeah. so Luke lived in the UK. Great guy. He went to Australia to be with his girl. I think he's at a quarantine 40 days later. And I was going to go back to quarantine. Oh, another discussion. Really? And he's just a really good dude. He runs up the mobbed up underworld on Instagram. So, check that out. And they do a lot of good research. Him and uh, Luke Buckley, two good dudes, really good dudes. Uh, you know, I just want to say one thing. I'm just going to cut you off. But you know how yeah. we're talking about, like, gaining subscribers and stuff like that? Yeah. Let's just say that you had – you were doing this for money, right? <laughs> Definitely you, not. You were doing it for money. Yeah. How many subs would you need? If you had a couple of rich people in your chat that were hitting you off with money, well, so maybe we don't need a hundred thousand or or five million people. And the other thing is, the more people we get, yes, the less is. intimate it's going to be because now you have a thousand people in the chat. Yeah, and well, how okay, are you going to so communicate with all of them? So, so maybe is, less is better. There is a few different models. And I'm like kind of a menu guy, so I don't favor one over the other. I got to think about it. Um, yeah, uh, contact uh, Tom at newtheory.com, and I'll connect you with Jason, or go to jsvcapital.com. Loans without the broken bones. That's, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good loan. Um, so um, there's a few different models, right? Some people try to build content out and make money of their catalog. You only make like four bucks per thousand views. You could have a hundred thousand views. You only make 400 bucks. So that nice. takes a wild and a slow build. Another model is doing like a lot of lives and getting snapped on you know, uh, super chats and cash apps. The only downside to that is then you, if you got to keep increasing your audience, because if you got the same 20 people giving you 50 bucks every other week, they're going to get fatigued. And if you don't backfill them with other people, you, right. you're, you're just going to plateau. So right. I don't, that's one model. Another Luke's one is, okay. another one is doing, um, exactly. Another one is, um, and, and I like, right. Another one is you can do like a, a Patreon or subscription where maybe you have like a thousand dudes or, and women and you, they pay you five bucks a month. You have like a close knit community you, you're, you're on twice a week. And then if you want to chop it up, it's intimate. You know, they can like, you could do zooms and you could do like more of a community. Right. And then, you know, you make 5,000 a month and maybe you get a sponsor to supplement. The last one is what I prefer. This, the sponsor model where the sponsor kind of pays a freight on the finances to cover the show. Yeah. And the cover of the show is 
editing, um, any hosting fees you have, uh, graphic design, other stuff, and also your time. That's the other part. Right. Uh, content content providers um, yeah. really discount their time. If I were to take my time that I've been putting in YouTube and put my agency rate to it, I'm working for like four dollars an hour. <laughs> like so, yeah. so, so it's not. I laugh when people think think it's a big money maker. I think the end game for us is to build a strong community and then kind of see where it goes. I hate to say this, Vinny, but see where it goes like organically. Oh, also you could do merch. Um, merch is a good way to monetize. Um, another what way you, is, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. No, what do then, you think of Patreon channels? I I I, I don't I don't like them. Um, um, Let's unpack um, it. I I I don't love I don't love them um, because uh, what happens is you do what is called the freemium model, right? So we go ahead and we do a show tonight, right? And then right. all of a sudden we do. Um, another show and we put it on there and you got to pay to get to it. Right. I like, it's kind of like the Sammy thing. People, Sammy Francis, people don't like to kind of like get stuff for free and then they got to upgrade to get to another level. And that's what that Patreon is called the freemium model. I don't love that. Um, one way is to sell merch. Another is if you have conversions, what I mean by conversions is if I have a marketing company, um, well, I mean, uh, the uh, likes it. Um, if, um, if you have a marketing company, I might try to convert some of the subscribers over to marketing right. clients. So it kind of, you know what I mean? So that's another way to convert to your regular business and, so, and, 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 and sell and, and sell products. So there's different ways to really nice kind girl. of skin that cat. We're so going to pretty um, much, it, pretty much it telling the people on here, we have much better stuff, but you'll have to subscribe to hear it. That's pretty much what you do. Yeah. I think if you're an entertainer, I mean, we're not entertainers. I mean, I'm not, I'm an entertainer. No, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I says no. if you're an entertainer. Oh, oh. I don't see anything wrong with an entertainer going on Patreon. I mean, it's not a place for me. I mean, I like I like the community. I'm here for the community and you guys, and I like this environment. I mean, I, I don't I don't think one not one thought in my mind goes through any revenue through this whatsoever. Not one. I, it's, mm -hmm. right. I enjoy this. So then there's I the have... fourth model, which is the <laughs> Vinnie Bracco model, which is not very, you know, I don't know how he came <laughs> up with this and devised it in his head. Guys, I got, I got, I got to run. Fourteen I'll be times, back on. Yeah, hold fourteen on. shows we'll, a day. We'll, you know, we'll wrap it up because I got a call, but I'll be back on after the call. Well, no, we're wrap, we're wrapping up on this because we gotta. Um, it was meant to. Be we gotta go on right? Vinny's. Yeah, then we gotta jump on <laughs> jump on Vinny's. Um, Vinny's got Vinny's got a 10, 11, 11, 30, 12, 12, 30. Yeah. It's like well, this, this, was, this, was, this, meant, this was meant. This was meant. This was meant to be a quick one. This is actually we're, 10, 10 wins. <laughs> well, let's let's do this because he's got to go anyway, and uh, this was a short one for me. I guess Vinny will reconvene on yours. I'll try to come back on if I can. Okay. But um, this was just a quick one. We wanted to chop it up. Um, the Four Horsemen is going to be on another channel, uh, a part of a channel that's going to live with New Theory. So this is kind of like our second episode, if you will, coming out, pun intended. Uh, hey, this on new Theory. Off, so, so we'll probably we'll probably park this there. Jason is hosting New Theory. Um, we take it over from my old show. He has some cool interviews. We'll drop that. And then Joe's launching it so soon. So this is just kind of a quick chop it up session. And uh, I appreciate everybody for coming on. I guys. want to come on New Theory. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah no, but no, no. I no, not as a guest, mother effer. I want to come oh. on as your co-host. Oh, let's do it. I'd love it. I'd love it. In fact, we, me and Tom talked about that today. About yeah, you, yeah. your ears. We, should, we should scream at each other. It'd be perfect. You know what I mean? We could just. <laughs> hey, can we? Can we shout out Fridays? Joe and I. The oh, dynamic so duo. We have a, an episode every Friday. Yeah. What but time? You'll see us 23 times before Friday, so <laughs> we'll, we'll give you advance notice. I'm not taking a day off, Joe, not 23. I tell him to go on right, right. because I like hanging with this schmuck. I don't know. That Am I crazy too. for that? All right. We're, we're no, right. Right. Hard stop at 45 minutes. Uh, we, thank you, everybody, for coming Vinny, on. I'll call you. Sorry we okay. couldn't drop the link. 007, I'll reach out to you. Um, this was a quick one. I, if we got more time, I'd love to. That's Drop some links said. and stuff. But uh, for now, we'll wrap it up and uh, see you guys soon. Get you. Bye.